Welcome uh, into the media center this morning, uh, Mr. A.J. Almendinger, uh, driver of the number 47 Kroger Hungry Jack Crisco Chevrolet for JTG Doherty Racing. Uh, has four top 15 finishes at Michigan, 15 starts, um, and is also obviously looking ahead to uh, Sonoma in a few weeks. He's posted two top 10 finishes there and won the poll there uh, last year. So uh, good couple of weeks ahead of you potentially obviously yeah. this is a nice stretch for you overall historically but how are you feeling right now about the team and how you're driving uh well i'm driving quite perfect actually <laughs> yeah so uh, i don't know about the team but my driving has been pretty spot on uh no no I, you know uh all kidding aside you know i think it's going fairly well uh, we've been bouncing kind of right in that cutoff right now, bouncing back and forth between in, in the chase and out of the chase. Uh, you know, still a lot of weeks ahead of us, but just the way the team's progressing, you know, we got pretty good speeds in the car kind of everywhere we go. Uh, you know, the places like Charlotte, uh, Pocono last week in Michigan are, are tracks that the last couple of years we've really struggled at. And, and I feel like, although we not quite where we want to be, definitely have improved. So, you know, everything kind of looking ahead, uh, we're, we're heading the right direction. It's just, uh, you know, right where we're at in points right now, it's, uh, you know, you have a bad week and, and it's uh, a big hit and you have a good week and it's, you're back in, inside the chase. So it's. The way it's going to be and just uh, try to go out every weekend. And uh, put our best foot forward and, and try to minimize our mistakes and, and get everything that we can, maximize the finishes, uh, no matter whether we got a great race car or, or not a good race car, and just try to get everything we can out of it. All right. Uh, just uh, shoot up your hand, get my attention. AJ's here, so always there's lot, lots of lights and paparazzi, so it's uh, you know hard for me to see a little bit. But uh, we'll start over here with Mike. And then we'll go over to Lee, and then we'll come over to Bob. Uh, AJ, Mike uh, from the Detroit Free Press. You're on a smaller team, um, but you're a good driver. Where do you get the – what sort of gains do you look for against the bigger guys, and uh, how do you get there, and uh, can you get there on, on a team uh, like yours? Yeah, I mean, I think we can get there. Uh, it's a lot harder to get there for sure. You know, we got to – you know, with, with 50 people on our race team – you know, we all got to kind of work together, which makes this race team a lot of fun. Uh, you know, Tad and Jody really go out there and, and make this team a family. And, uh, you know, over the, this is my third year with the team, and I really feel like as, as a team gelling together with the additions of, of Randall Burnett, which is my crew chief, and Ernie Cope, the competition director, uh, you know, guys like Brian Burns and, and Tony Palmer, which had been the, the, the crew chief and lead engineer, you know, they kind of stepped down and, and uh, went to the – the engineering side of it so everything's gelling well uh you know you'd like everything overnight you'd love to show up and just say all right our cars are the fastest cars there and and uh we go out there and and you know have a chance to win every weekend it's not that easy uh, but if you look at a team like the 78 you know it's taken a lot of years to get where they're at right now for sure i mean this is what their their 11th 12th year maybe in nascar and over the last two years is, is by far been their best season. So it definitely takes time. But they also show if you go out there and you work hard together, uh, work in the right areas, you have uh, the, the people that are smart enough to know which directions we have to head as, as NASCAR always keeps kind of uh, developing and working on new packages like we have this weekend, uh, you know, we can get there. And uh, it just takes a lot of hard work and, and a lot of uh, sticking together. So I see that in our race team. Uh, we're not quite there yet, but we're definitely, as I said, heading in the right direction to where we can uh, continually compete inside the, the top 15, then the top 10, then contend for wins any given racetrack. <laughs> Jen, does that help? <laughs> That's why Jen just walks around just angry all the time. Uh, <laughs> No, I mean, you know what, it's, uh, I try to have fun with it, but you know, I'll be the first person to admit, you know, I mean, if it's, you, you'll see it on my face when it's not going well, or if I'm hard on myself, you know, that's the biggest thing. I'm just, I'm really hard on myself.
I appreciate and understand how hard my guys work every weekend. And I really do appreciate I try to show how much I appreciate it. I try to thank them every chance that I get. Um, but I'm hard on myself because I want to get more for them. So, uh, you know, it's just like everything else. It's ups and downs. I'm trying to be learn how to be better about kind of staying middle of the road. I'm definitely not there yet for sure. But, uh, but that's the biggest thing. I just try to make sure my guys know how much I care and how much I want it for, for them and for us. Go over to Candice, and then we will go to Mr. Pockress. Candice Spencer, motorsport.com. Um, <laughs> you can call me Candy, though. Oh, my God. Anyway, <laughs> you're going to your... Which is a different line than I usually use. because I, I, I say I don't care what you call me as long as you call me. So whatever. <laughs> Candy, go ahead. Thank you. Um, you're going home next weekend uh, when we get to Sonoma, and... Um, what would it mean to win in front of your home crowd or what you consider your home track? Yeah, I mean, it, it's – you try to go out there, and, and I try to have the mindset, you know, it's just another weekend, but we know it's not. It's uh, – there's a lot of great things. It's my home race. It's a race that I grew up going to. Uh, I always enjoy. I think it's one of the best racetracks that we have in the U.S. when it comes to road course racing. Uh, you know, it's it's a home race for our sponsored Kingsford and Clorox. You know, we got a lot of people that, that show up from, from the corporation that's based in Oakland. So only, you know, an hour or so down the road. Uh, you know, we're going to have Ralph's on the car, which is a, uh, a a Kroger company, but it's a home company, you know, a, a store that I have went to a lot growing up. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that comes down to why it would be special to win. But in the end, uh, it'd be special because it gets you into the chase. And and you go out there and it makes the rest of the season just a little bit easier to prepare for the chase. Um, but yeah, I mean that's a you know everybody's got that 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 home race that stands out. You know we know the biggest races in our sport, the Daytona 500, you know Brickyard, Darlington. But you know for me Sonoma's is on top of the list because that's a race that I've loved. I, I have family and friends. And it would be a, a special moment to go out there and be able to share that and, and spend that in victory lane. But you can't get ahead of yourself. I mean, it's such a tough and difficult race. Uh, although we've been fast there, if you look at my stats, they're not very good just because there's there's a lot of bad luck. There's a lot of uh, ups and downs during the race, whether it comes with cautions, the, the way the tires are used there, the strategy. So it's a long ways to get there. But I know when we show up, we're going to have a good car and we're going to have a good shot to win it. And as one of the four drivers who was Sun's crew chief last week, can you talk about what, you know, pretty much what you guys went through? I mean, I know you have depth of uh, in your organization with several crew chiefs to, to fall back on, but can you kind of talk about, you know, so people understand what it was like, how it was different not having Randall there? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it, I'd say it's a difficult rule for sure. You know, when, when, uh, when you have a, a lug nut off or, a tire at the end of the race and and now your crew chief suspended and and uh things like that it, i mean it's a it's a difficult rule but we've kind of put ourselves in that box and uh you know it was it was a, a certain challenge but ernie cope was you know he, he he was there as the crew chief you know as our competition director and you know randall and i and ernie and all of us have all worked together so i wouldn't say it was that big of a challenge uh, it was just a different voice on the radio we didn't really go about the weekend any different I did think we learned some stuff. Ernie wanted to try a couple things, and I think it helped us. So uh, in the end, I hope it, it makes us a little bit better. And uh, But overall, you know, that's what's good about our – I'd say if this happened last year, we'd, we'd have been in uh, real big trouble. Uh, but this, this year we got the depth, and uh, we got all the people kind of working together. So it, it was just a – in the end, it was just a different voice on the radio. Thanks, Lee. We'll go to Bob and then over to Brian in the middle. Uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. Before all the road course races, you keep telling us, well, we're trying not to put too much pressure on ourselves. Um, how successful are you at doing that? And then also the fact that you're kind of on the bubble versus uh, maybe if you were like 22nd or 23rd in points, would, does that change as far as the pressure or how you would approach Sonoma? I, I mean, obviously, Bob, you see I'm really successful at it. I'm pretty calm all the time, so... You know, there's no pressure at all. It does, it, it's not on my mind. I don't think about it. I'm, it's not going to bother me at all. I'm not thinking about it right now, actually. So uh, uh, it's not going to bother my golf game in Pebble. You like that? I'm going to Pebble. Yeah, it's going to be good. So I like that. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, I mean, we 
we know we show up, we're going to have an opportunity to win the race. We go do the right things. The biggest differences this year is being kind of on the bubble. Hopefully we have a good weekend here and, and we're in the cutoff line uh, at the end of this weekend. But, you know, the biggest deal is, is that it, it doesn't have to be an all or nothing scenario, which it has been the last two years. We go there and have a good weekend and finish second the last two years. It's great, but it doesn't do anything for us because we're so far out of the top 16 in points. It was winter bust at Sonoma or Watkins Glen, which uh, no matter how you try to look at it, there's more pressure doing that. And I drove like it, knowing that I had to win the race to make any kind of difference for our season. So this year, you know, I mean, it's, of course, the ultimate goal is still to win, but we go finish in the top five. It's a good day. It's going to be good in points. It's going to help us out a lot. So uh, that's kind of the mentality that we got to have to have. But, you know, in the end, you see how Friday goes and see how Saturday goes, see what kind of race car you have and what kind of expectations you have for Sunday. All right, we'll go over to Brian, and then we'll wrap it up with Chris Knight. Brian Nelson, MRN. Uh, Dinger, so you kind of talked about it <laughs> not affecting your, your golf game and your attitude about going into Sonoma. But with vacation the next week, i got to imagine you're just eagerly looking forward to having a break. Um, with Sonoma looming, whether it's your desire to win at home or eyeing the chase berth, does Sonoma hanging out the following weekend intrude at all will that be on your mind how do you deal with that while you're on vacation it'll it'll always be on my mind you know there's not a day that that goes by that i don't think about the upcoming race and, and especially sonoma uh you know it'd be good on the off weekend more for our guys to to get away you know they uh they work so hard and, and especially our, our crew guys that are here you know because we don't have a lot of people uh they have to be here all weekend and, and then go home on Monday and they start tearing apart the car and start getting the next car ready and, and so on. So it's good for everybody to get a break and be able to spend some time with their family or just get away. Uh, you know, for me, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm going to go play some golf and pebble and, and uh, have a good time. But, you know, like I said, there, there won't be a time, a moment that I'm on the golf course that at least not on the back of my mind. It, it's the struggles to not make it on the front of my mind. And that's what I have to be better about is doing the right things whether it's monday tuesday wednesday thursday leading up going into sonoma making sure i'm still taking care of myself and and uh focused on on the prize which is going there and being sure, being the best that i can be when i get to the racetrack but that's the biggest thing it'll be there on my mind it's just how good am i about not making it on the front of my mind until i pull into sonoma on friday so um i guess we'll wait and see about that we'll see what the golf scores are if it's if it's mid 90s at Pebble, it's on the front of my mind. If I'm shooting low 80s, it's definitely in the back of my mind. Mr. Knight, right there. Chris Knight, CatchFans.com. AJ was announced this week that you're going to be one of the four drivers that RCR has added to their Xfinity Series lineup. What prompted that, and how much are you looking forward to the opportunity? Uh, I mean, what prompted it, what prompted it was uh, was RC coming to me and asked me if I would would want to do the road course race at, at mid ohio on our off weekend so um you know for sure mid ohio was a was a special victory that i had back in 2013 when i was with team penske and uh just i love the racetrack i love the atmosphere there there's always a big crowd and uh more importantly i know that i can get in uh in that race car and have a chance to win and and that was the easiest decision on that was the fact that uh, you know especially the two car but but all of RCR and, and their program, whether it's the Cup or the Xfinity Series, you know, it's strong and, and they show up and they have a chance to win the race. So, you know, any t any chance that you have to go win a in a race in a NASCAR series, uh, it makes it a lot easier to, to make the decision and say yes. So I look forward to it. I'm thankful that, that RC thought of me. And, um, you know, I think we're going to have Reem on the car for that race. So uh, to have Reem... To, to say that they want me in the race car is a big deal. So it'll be a lot of fun. And, and when we get to that point, uh, I'll be definitely excited to get in that race car and go have a shot to win in mid-Ohio again.